ahead and uh, let's open up our Bibles. We're in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And uh, we're going to go ahead and pick up uh, right where we uh, left off. And um, I'm hoping that everyone is enjoying their summer. Mm -hmm. Summer's coming down to an end now. And um, we are going to really try to, uh, try to get through this. Um, and probably before, before school starts, uh, or just shortly after that, we'll be moving into Galatians. And um, once again, another beautiful book that we will see Paul uh, bringing forth some, some wonderful aspects of Christian living. So without any further delay, let's go right into our reading of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Chapter 6. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet alway rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. O ye Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you, our heart is enlarged. Ye are not straitened in us, but ye are straitened in your own bowels. Now for a recompense in the same, I speak as unto my children, be ye also enlarged. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. All right, so there we go, chapter 6. And one of the things about this chapter, it's, it's, it's beautiful in its poetic theme of how it brings its point together with poetic contrasts, similes, and descriptions. A lot of times we talk like that. Sometimes, you know, we, you, you'll deal with somebody and say, uh, well, or, or he, she's as pretty as a flower, right? Or he's as tall as a tree. Right? We'll, we'll give little things that, that, that speak to that. Uh, we, we'll use every, you know, a lot of different uh, adjectives and, and descriptive language. And that's part of poetic uh, uh, expression. And Paul is using some of that here to help us to understand an aspect about working with Christ. Look how he opens this up. He says, we then, and remember, what did we, what did we just come from? We came from chapter 4. Let's go back. Let's, let's refresh our, remember, our, our, our memories. Chapter 4 opened up and said, Wherefore, seeing we have this what? Ministry. And he went on to talk about how there's no need to faint because the ministry is not going to be easy. It's not going to be something that's, that just happens. And, he go, and we, we talked about that, how he explained that. In chapter 5, he talked about, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle is dissolved, we have a building of God, and house uh, uh, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. All right, so once again, he's talking about that we are here on earth in a temporary setting. Mm -hmm. But while we are here, we are to do ministry. We are to have some a purpose. 
and uh, your, your, your ministry is something that God will always uh, have for you. It will be sometimes not as clear, but it's still always there. Sometimes it's very clear. It's not always easy. It's not always something that just because God told you to do something that, that, that everything's going to roll over and fall down and, and create a clear path for you to do what you know that God has called you to do. And so in chapter 6, he's picking up on this and bringing this forth and showing you a lot of aspects of how we are to go about this ministry. And this little short chapter brings forth some very true uh, uh, contrast that we have to pay attention to because a lot of this happens today. So he says, we then, as workers together with him, and that him uh, is the Lord, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. So what is the grace of God? We talked about that grace. That the grace is God giving you something that you did not what? Deserve. You didn't deserve. Now that's like somebody you know, giving you a car and you just neglect it. Giving you a job that you didn't, that you didn't really earn but they said, well we're going to bless you with the job. I mean, you show up late every day. All right. So the thing about it is a lot of times God gives people gifts. And they well, I don't care. You got the ability to do something. Well, who cares about that? You got the you you, you have talent. You have uh, a, a, a a blessed skill. No, well, no big deal. And and God is saying that we should not use his grace because the fact that you have something <laughs> is a gift. Because not everybody has it. And you cannot neglect your gifts. You cannot just say, well, I don't care. Not so long. And see, that's where the enemy wants because now he knows you'll never reach what God has planned for you. Your potential will always be second class, third rate, off the chart as far as not reaching what God has for you when you neglect. Now, so the Bible says we're all born in what? Sin. Sin and shaped in iniquity. All right, what are the, what's the wages of sin? Yeah. Okay, now the fact that all of us are alive means that we are walking in the grace of God. Because we don't have death. So just the fact that you wake up every day, that's grace number one. All right. Grace number two is the aspect that you know the Lord. Because he's called you to, and, and, and given you the ability to know that he is real. And then there are grace three, four, five, ten, twenty, thirty, four, all, you know, you watch the Olympics, right? You watch the guy that the the the, 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 the running. He he didn't have no no legs. Mm -hmm. and he's out there running. Now he was born with some kind of leg situation, and they had to have they had to amputate his legs. Well, I mean, somebody said, well, why was he born like that? No, wait a minute, wait a minute. The wages of sin is what. Yeah. So the fact that he even has life, he still has what grace. Grace. And sometimes we have to look at that. Sometimes we wonder, well, if God was so good. How come all these people are born with all these different things? No, 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 wait a minute. The fact that they're not born dead is the aspect of God's grace. The fact that God even allows life. You know, even kids that, are, that, that die in the womb, I believe they still are souls. And so now they have, a op they, they have the, op uh, the opportunity to, to, to receive eternal blessings. Amen. All right. So now this guy's born and he had a leg uh, 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 situation and had both his legs amputated because you know, that's the only way he could function. But then look, look what he did with his. Yeah. He out there running in the Olympics with all them. It, you you got to look at that and say, well, man, using his his he's not allowing the grace of God. God didn't give him perfect legs, but God gave him the ability to run, and he's not taking it in vain. He's using it. Now there's a whole lot of other things we can get to. Sometimes people that understand the word of God, you read the Bible and it makes it click. Well, you need to use that. People that understand how to, how to give consolation. I know how to solve problems. I know how to be a peacemaker. Whatever your gift is, it is a grace of God and we should not neglect it. The problem is that the devil wants us to think of it as the opposite because I don't have all the ability that this guy has. I don't have all the money that this person has. I don't have all the the, 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 the power that that person had, then the devil tries to look, get us to look at it in the opposite frame 
Well, you don't have anything. No, <laughs> you have the grace of God. When you have God allowing you to know him, to have life, and to walk in, uh, in his ways according to the word. And so what Paul is saying, do not receive the grace of God in vain. Don't just count it as well, so what? Make sure that you understand it as precious, as valuable, and as God-given. Verse 2, For he saith, I, ha uh, I have heard thee in the time accepted, and in the day of salvation I, suc I succored you, or, or helped you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So what uh, Paul is saying here is, this is the time, now. You know, use your gifts and your callings now. All right, let's go on. Verse 3. Give no offense to anything, that the ministry be not blamed. So the aspect that Paul is saying here is don't use your ministry as a means of manipulation. Don't bring an offense you know, you ever walk around somebody and they say, oh, this guy is offensive. <laughs> Usually that means either his language is bad or his body odor is bad. There's something that's wrong with the way he's presenting himself. All right? So what we want to make sure is that we don't offend. Use your gift, but don't abuse it. Sometimes when God gives you the ability, God gives some people the ability of leadership. Well, you've got to lead people in the what? In the right direction. If you have a gift of leadership... You can't just lead people wherever you want to go. Well, I want them to go here. All right? You've got to make sure that where you're leading folk is, is, is correct. Sometimes you are given the gift of influence. Right? Well, you got, when, you give, when you give your advice, you better make sure you're giving proper advice. There's so many different things of how this, the ministries can be misused. And Paul is pointing this out now. All right? Look at verse 4. But in all things, approving ourselves as the minister of God in much what? Patience. The first thing. All right? Just because you have a gift, don't think that your gift is going to show off today, every day. You got to give it time. Be patient in your ministry. Okay? Allow it to develop. In afflictions. Wait a minute. If I have a God-given gift, if God has given me the, his grace, why do I have to suffer for it? Why does it have to be such hard work? Why does it have to be such, you know, all, uh, 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 you know, everyday uh, 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 input? Why don't it just happen? Why don't I just can't just show, wake up one day and everything working? That's not the way it works here. Yeah, obviously, you got to be patient. You're going to go through some affliction, all right, uh, and, and uh, necessities. Sometimes you may not have all the things that you need, all right? So you're going to have to lean on other people to help you, to assist, and distress, all right? <laughs> Sometimes you just feel like, I, I, this is not going to work. I'm not having a good day. But just because you have a bad day don't, don't mean that you're not in God's grace. Just because you're having a bad day don't mean that you still don't have the gift that God has given you. You still got it, but you got that's what part of the patience in stripes. That means somebody's attacking you. Right? So Paul, during Paul's day, stripes mean you were getting your back what? Whip. Mm. All right? But people attack today different. People attack with, with, with words and words. You know, all yeah. other kind of stuff. In imprisonment. All right? Throwing people in, uh, in jail because of that. All right? A lot of folks today, we got, we got millions and millions of people in prison not by bars. But imprisoned by by finance, mm -hmm. imprisoned by the inability of lack of jobs, the inability to do certain things, all right. And so, therefore, because basically imprisonment means you you can't go, you can go this far but no further. Because when you're in your jail cell, you can walk all you want to walk. You just can't walk past those bars. Amen. Well, and life there's a lot of imprisonment like that, like where. You wouldn't want to do things for your family, but you can't walk because you're, you got you walk you're face first into financial bars, face first into other kind of bars that stop you. So imprisonment, yes, is physical, but it also can be mental. It can be spiritual. It could be financial. 
And it could be, you know, a lot of different things. Social imprisonments, all right? And two malls, all right? With the, everybody's just going different directions. And sometimes you just don't know which, which way is the right way. And with our society today, it, with all kinds of stuff, I was watching the Olympics and they had this commercial on uh, and where they're trying to uh, push forth this, this show called The New Normal. I don't know if you saw this. And it's about two homosexual men that are trying to uh, get a child, have, a, have a, a, a child. But, you know, I sit there watching it and I'm like, you know, and then the fact that they call this The New Normal. Mm. Now, you, you can say all you want. I'm not trying to tell anybody you can do what you want to do, but I'm never going to say that that's normal. It's not normal. It's, 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 it's outside of what nature in, even itself says. And we went through that in Romans. Right. But the aspect that, that this turmoil, this whole aspect, and they're trying to confuse our kids' minds as to what's right. Well, just because if two people just love each other, there's nothing wrong with that. No, we're supposed to love each other all, you know, in, in every aspect. And we even love the person that has that mindset. We don't just, just uh, 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 hate an individual. But I cannot, to me, love would not be telling somebody that I know is true just to agree with them, okay, it's right. If I knew that the bridge was out down here and somebody said, well, I would like to go to Cold Springs. Can I go cross that bridge down there? On, 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 right on 52, I'd be like, well, you, you can if you want to, but I don't think you should go that way because I, I, I know that bridge is out. It, the, the bridge is not working. Now, if I don't tell them that, what kind of love do I have? If I say, mm, do, do what you want to. Go on that bridge. Yeah. You can go down that bridge if you, down, down that bridge if you want to. Now, that would be wrong. Now, I personally believe, by the word, that people that want to accept that as normal lifestyle are incorrect. So, for me, just to agree with them, just so that I can not be disagreeable with them, would not be disservice because I personally believe that they'll be heading down a road that will definitely cause them more and more problems. So therefore, it's important for me to let them know, look, I ain't got nothing against you or what you, but I personally don't believe that that's the right way to go. I think you're going down the wrong road. That road is full of bumps, problems, dead ends, broken bridges. You're going to see yourself in a situation when you're dealing with God as not beating uh, a task that God has asked you to do going down that road. And so it's important for us uh, as turmoils and all these different society uh, uh, changes come about that we continue to speak what the scripture says in love, in care. Right? Uh, and it says in labor. Right? And that goes uh, right in line with what we're talking about. God has given me a gift. He's given me a task. He's given me a ministry. He's given me an ability. And I have to labor. Now let's go back to the man that, that ran the Olympics. You think he just, they just gave him his prosthetic legs and, you know, they had the little, you know, the bounce in it. But you just think, well, I just put him on and start running. You think he has to do any preparation? Yes, a lot of practice. A lot. All right. And so, labor. You've got to put the work in. You've got to put the study in. You got to put the effort in. So Paul is pointing this out. Anybody that wants to do anything in this world better has to wake up to these types of things as far as doing things for the Lord. In watchings, all right, paying attention to what's going on, understanding how it's done, all right, learning the rules of society, and fasting, all right. Sometimes you have to do what? Deny yourself. Yeah. See, see these words here, Paul. He's just throwing words out there. But you see how deep these words are. Yeah. Right. All right. And and uh, pureness. All right. So you have to make sure that your motives are what proper. By what knowledge? Once again, just because you've been given a gift, just because you have a grace, the grace of God working in you, don't mean that you have to take. You don't take time to understand what it is God has called you to do. You know? If God has given you a ministry to go down and speak to the people in uh, 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 in China, do you think you might need to learn how to speak Chinese? You <laughs> should. So you gotta, you gotta put some knowledge 
to what your gift and call is. Understand it. Get the knowledge about it. All right? By long suffering. All right? So, there's some times when things just don't, they're not going right. And they haven't been going right for a while. But we got to do what? Continue on. We press on towards the mark of the high calling, right? That's another scripture. By kindness. All right? So, now, it's, to me, it's interesting that long suffering is put right next to kindness. Because what is, when do your attitudes usually come up? When, when do you really got to? When, suffer. when things ain't going too well. <laughs> you know? When things ain't, that's when you really like, you know what? You need to get out of my face right now. And then all the, all the, you know, all the little pleasantries kind of, they, this is hard to come up with sometimes when you not, when things are going bad. So, yeah, long suffering, but you, you still have to be kind. All right? By the Holy Ghost. That's how you do it. So you need God in you. If you think you're going to do it all by yourself, it's not going to happen. All right? By the Holy Ghost. By love unfringed. All right? So you got to have love for God and for people. If you don't love people, then people become a problem. And I noticed that, you, you, I don't know if you noticed that, but on the highway, you ever see people, I'm sure none of y'all are like this, <laughs> but you see people, and I used to be like this, I, I have to admit, I used to drive like that. I used to see people, matter of fact, I'll, not so much as, have you ever seen people, let me tell you about me. Years ago, I was, when I was on the road, everybody in the, on the road in front of me was in my way. That was my philosophy. <laughs> they, they're in my way, why don't they just get out my way? And I would just drive up and like, you need to move over because I need to go past you because you stopped me from going. Away. And I believe the road belonged to me. Now, thank God, I, you know, you mature and you get a little bit understanding that no, everybody's trying to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. But you see people t even today. I'm just sitting there and they be riding right up on your right up on your bumper and they're like, they're flashing the lights and honking the horns. It's like you don't belong on this road. You, when you see me coming, you need to pull off to the side and let me go through. That's the attitude that they have. Well, a, a lot of times that that attitude comes um, because you don't love other people. You don't. You're not even considering what they're trying to do. Right? You know, yes, they on the road. This person's trying to go to work just like me. Why am I acting like the road belongs to me? So I see that a lot on the road. How people are just so insensitive to each other. No, no love, no concern about what this person may be trying to do. Now that's a prime example, but we, we see that in other aspects of life too. Right? We see that in our everyday act, uh, 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 working, where we just look at people as just folks in the way. And no, everybody has something that they're trying to do. Even if they don't know the Lord, they, they're going about what they think is right, but that's when you should be praying for people. God, help this individual. Open up their mind to know you as I know you. And, uh, and broaden their horizons to the understanding of what's really going on in this world. All right? And so that goes right to what we're talking about here. Look at verse 7. By the word of what? Truth. Truth. Because see, a lot of people are going through this world living a lot because they think that certain things are going to really bring forth joy in their life. But when the reality of it is, if you're not working in the grace of God with the, with the help of God, using the gifts that God has given you, you will never be happy you will never have fulfillment in this world. And that's the secret, I tell you. And I thank God every day for that aspect of it because it helps to round you in and pull you in when things are not going well, when the turmoil and the long suffering comes on. You begin to realize, you know what, it really don't all matter anyway. So obviously I'm going through something difficult here. I know God is real. I know God knows what's going on. Those things are true. So therefore, let me continue on. Let me continue with the development. Let me continue on with the patience. Let me continue on with the, with the knowledge. Let me continue on with the labor. Let me continue on doing those things that I know to do. Knowing the truth that God is not going to uh, do, allow anything to happen that he has not given me an ability to withstand. That's the truth. And that truth helps you in times of difficulties. All right? By the power of God. There's another aspect of it. All right? Actually, I just kind of already uh, uh, talk, uh, touched on that. But you've got to be able to recognize that you've got to do these things by the power of God. All right? It's not in my own power. And, and 
And sometimes it's hard for us to differentiate between the two because once again, Paul told us to get knowledge, right? He told us to do the labor, right? So we're putting forth that work. And oftentimes, because we put forth that work, we're expecting everything to just work well. Because while I'm doing the work, I'm getting the information I need. And how come it's not happening? Well, you still need God's touch. It's not you. God says, yeah, set everything up. But until I touch it, it's not blessed. But still do the work. And just be patient, wait for me, continue to do the work. Well, and, and then when the right time comes, God says, I'll put my hand on it and everything will fall right in line. And, and that's the beauty of it. And sometimes that's also the struggle of it because when we do the work, we expect instant, re I want the, re re the response and the, and, the, and the reactions and things to happen according to what I believe I have already set forth. Wait a minute. What I have set forth? No. No. It's about what God has done. Now, does that mean that, well, if God is doing it, this is what people get confused. Well, if God is doing it, then I shouldn't have to do all the labor and all, the, all this. No, we still got to do that too. You see the nice, the, the, the relationship there? God is saying, you have to do the work. You've got to put forth the labor. You've got to put forth. And then when you continue to do that at the right time, I will touch it. And you just watch everything start to move in the right way. But that takes... Uh, a, a trust and a commitment to, to the Lord that sometimes we struggle with. All right. By the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right and on the left. See, the armor of what? Righteousness. This is where right living comes in. See, that, that right living is your protection. Because, see, when you don't live right, when you do the things that are wrong, then the devil can punch you right in the gut with guilt. He can come in and say, look how you're living. Bam. And hit you. And you don't have the armor of righteousness because you're not living righteous. Now, our righteousness, the armor that we're carrying, is not the, the, the aspect of our salvation. That's just something where we, give, we don't give the devil a foothold. Because our, our righteousness for eternity, our righteousness for salvation, doesn't come from us anyway. Where does it come from? God. It comes from God. But for your own warfare, it to the best of your ability, you live righteousness to your ability so you don't give a foothold, you don't give a stick to the devil to do what? To hit you with. So the devil can say, well, look at how you, you got upset and all, uh, had an attitude and told that person off. What kind of Christian are you? Well, you're the same Christian that God said it, your, your best righteousness is what? Filthy rags. Right. All right? That part never changed. But now the devil gets to do that mental game with you. And you get to feel guilty. And, then, and once you feel guilty, the devil jumps on that. So we have to walk as close to the righteousness of Christ as we can. And that's the advantage of doing it. That's the beauty of doing it. We, don't, we then begin to... But then, what you also got to make sure that you don't do is get what? Self-righteousness. Mm -hmm. Remember... When you have a good day, thank God. Amen. When you have a bad day, thank, thank God. God. Right? Don't ever have a good day and, and then look back at somebody else. Well, y'all need to do better than that. You know, wait a minute. We, yes, everybody needs to do better. We all need to. Don't look, stuff your nose down at anybody that's not having a, a particularly good day or a good week or a good year. Because we all will have those opportunities to mess up. And the Bible shows us that. It shows us the life of all these different uh, prophets and, 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 uh, 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 and different characters throughout Scripture that had good days and bad days. Moses had good days and bad days. Abraham had good days and bad days. David certainly had some good days and bad days. All right? So, therefore, guess what? So will you and so will people that you deal with. All right? Verse, verse 8. By honor and dishonor. All right, and here's the key. Some days people are going to honor you. Some days somebody's going to do what? But what, what are you going to do? I'm trusting in the Lord. Regardless, I'm not going to get too puffed up, and I'm not going to get too pushed down. By evil report and good report. See the thing? See what Paul is showing you? Don't, don't get off track because people speak evil of you, and don't get off track because people speak good of you. By deceivers and yet 
uh, uh, as deceived and yet true. All right. Sometimes <laughs> you'll have an idea in your mind that this is what this is what I want. And when you look back on it, you know, two weeks later, two months later, or two years later, you be like, you know what? That was a waste of time. Now, we've all been there. We've all been uh, uh, tricked, so to speak, mm -hmm. thinking we're doing something that's good and realize that was, no, that's not the right way to go. And yet, when you find truth, you, you know, you continue to walk in. But the, the, the ultimate thing is that our, our main truth is our truth that, that God is who he says he is. Amen. That's our ultimate truth. Verse 9, as unknown and, and yet well known. All right. Whether people know who you are, or 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 could care less. Don't know. I don't know nothing about this individual. Popularity or unpopular. All right. As dying, and behold, we live. All right. There's another con a, 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 a contrast. It doesn't matter. All right. As chasing, and not killed. All right. So yes, we may be. Uh, 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 Corrected. You know, sometimes we gotta, you gotta uh, uh, put a little strap to the to the, to the kids. Sometimes you ain't going you ain't killing them. You don't kill you. you that, that's that's child abuse. But you do sometimes gotta get a strap and say, hey, you know what? Let me let me straighten you out here a little bit here. This is what you don't need to be doing. I got to put this in your memory. Right? And we always tell them the the earlier you do it, the better. Mm -hmm. They don't need to try and whoop a fourteen year old. You ain't never whooped them before. That ain't happening. You ain't that. You ain't gonna learn nothing then. Yeah. No, you started it up, chasing but not killed. Verse ten: as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. All right. So even though things are happening that are bad, we've learned to do what? Rejoice. All right. As poor, yet making many rich. All right. And I think we can identify. Sometimes we don't always have the, 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 the finances that we need, right? Mm -hmm. But at the aspect of understanding that when you know the Lord, you can't get any richer than that. Than knowing God and God knowing, uh, having you as his, uh, as his child. As having nothing, yet possessing all things. All right, there you go. There's an aspect once again. You can convince yourself of the truth that you may not have a thing. You may not have, I can't keep a job, I can't keep a car, I can't, but yet I'm what? I'm very rich because I have all things, because all things belong to who? To God. All right? So then he goes down, after this, once again, very poetic description of, of walking with the Lord. Verse 11, he goes, O ye Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you. And he's saying, I, I, you know, what else can I say? I want to tell you all things. I want to just share with you so much. Our hearts are enlarged. I want to just pour out my heart to you. I want you to understand what I understand. All right? Does that sound familiar sometimes? Amen. Sometimes when, when you're a parent and you try to get your kids to understand, you're just like... I wish I could just give you the understanding that, but it doesn't happen that way. That's how life is. Unfortunately, we just can't do it because guess what? When we were young and our parents tried to tell us stuff, we were like, damn, what they're talking about. No. They, they, they're just old people. <laughs> all right? We all had our little ways and stuff, but then we, go, we grew up and, we, and then we began to realize they knew what they were talking about. They had some wisdom. And... Um, Unfortunately, that's just the way uh, it is oftentimes. All right? Verse 12. Ye are not uh, straightened uh, uh, in us, but ye are straightened in your own uh, bowels. Now, what Paul's trying to say there, I have to be honest with you, I wasn't 100% sure what he's trying to say. <laughs> so, uh, what I will say is that he's encouraging them. <laughs> I'm not sure. I looked at that and I go, I'm not sure what the point was in that, uh, but uh, that's one of the things about the, the scripture. I mean, I, I have to confess that when you read this, the, the ultimate interpreter of the Bible is God. And one thing that we all will have uh, uh, something to look forward to is when we get to 
eternity. And when the Lord himself, the word, begins to open up the word, a lot of things will be made clear. Uh, and the, one of those days we look forward to. But I, I, if I was to, to, to um, give uh, what I think he's speaking of, what I'm thinking he's saying here is it, is it there's nothing to be worried about. Don't get your nerves off. Don't get just don't don't get all angst up. You know, keep yourself feeling comfortable and relaxed in the Lord. But then again, I could be wrong. Verse thirteen. Now for a recompense in the same, I speak as unto uh, uh, unto my children. All right. So he says, "Be ye also enlarged, all right, and be ye not in." unequally yoked together with unbelievers. So he's saying now, you know, here, here's an aspect here that he's trying to, and he's going to end with this, and he's trying to get us to understand. He says, be ye also enlarged, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And this is an aspect of the Christian walk and the Christian ministry, they get so much attention and so much discussion and uh, as to what it should be. Some people take this scripture and say, well, that means that I'm not supposed to deal with anybody that's not saved at all. They, if they won't shop at a store unless it's a Christian store. They, won't, they, they, they don't want to do anything. Some people take it to the extreme to where they separate themselves from the world. They go live in some com commune, in some kind of monastery, in some you know, out there in the in the mountains. Nobody see them. And they don't deal with nobody at all. Because they don't want to be dealing with nobody that's an unbeliever. All right? And and I, I don't believe this is what Paul is trying to get us to understand. But what he's trying to help us to see is that your ministry cannot be moved and influenced and guided by anybody that doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. Because this is what he's talking about. He's talking about your walk, your life, your ministry with the Lord. And so you cannot have your ministry yoked up with unbelievers. Mm -hmm. Now the thing about it is that your ministry aspect of it has a lot to do because the ministry that, that you have is you. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, when it comes to things that are going to be uh, uh, completely focused on what you do, it does come down to certain things that you do got to pay attention to. When somebody says, well, I want to get married, and they're doing a work for the Lord, and you say, well, well who do you want to marry? Well, I'm a married person that don't believe in Jesus. Well, I think this comes in play here. Well, how is your ministry as an individual going to work when you are marrying somebody that don't believe Jesus is God? He doesn't even believe in Jesus. That's going to definitely uh, open up a door then we go back to that aspect of, of, of righteousness. You're doing something outside of the known righteousness because now you're going to give the uh, opportunity for the, for the enemy to cause conflict in your life continuously. Mm -hmm. right? And so there's so much to this. And what I, what I try to do with certain situations like this is I don't try to make any hard, fast rules because the, the rules that I make are all from my perspective. The rules that somebody else made are from their perspective. You gotta read this and you gotta ask God, give me some, some understanding. But there are some things that are general truths that if you, un, you should not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers is a plain statement. So what does, that, what does that mean to be unequally yoked? What is that yoke aspect? What does yoke mean? Well, when it's talked about, you know, uh, is using a farming uh, analogy, when you're plowing, you would have this, you know, the, the stick that was in the ground, and they would put the weight on the stick, and usually the guy would stand on it and have the ox pull it, and that, and that stick would be in the ground, and it's on an angle, and it would just tear up the ground, and that's how it would loosen the ground up. It would do all kinds of, of farming, using that animal strength to pull it. And usually you use an ox, sometimes you use a, use a, a donkey or, or, you know, an ass. And so in the Old Testament, it says that your, your ox should not be yoked up with an ass. So therefore, you know, and I think it's a, it's a play on words, it's a pun <laughs> that God is saying that 
You don't don't you don't yoke up just the strong ox with the wild ass. Alright, so it's important to keep that in mind. That's the analogy that he's using here when he's talking about yoke. Jesus gave us the analogy. He told us to yoke up with him. He said, take my yoke. Because right, his yoke is what? Easy. Easy. And his burden is what? Light. So Jesus said, you yoke up with me. Now, if you yoke up with Jesus, how can you also yoke up with a what? Unbeliever. So there is the analogy that you have to really kind of think that through, and it makes kind of, you know very simple sense that when Paul is pointing this out, that this is something that we have to stay away from. Now, the problem is that um, our society tries to tell us, no, it don't matter. It don't really matter. It's no big deal. When those are things we should take into consideration. Now, does it destroy your salvation? No. But it sure can make your day-to-day -day life a little bit more difficult. Right. I think I think it could destroy your salvation because if you with someone that says that they don't believe in God, eventually, you know, and I believe in the old saying, the birds that flock together, you know, you know, if you hang with somebody long enough, I know how I feel when I'm not coming together with a bunch of believers. Why do I? Feel that way? Why do I have to go somewhere to simmer myself with a bunch of believers? Like we had our, you know, our vacation. You all went on vacation. I went on vacation. So that makes it a couple of weeks that I don't miss coming together with a bunch of believers. So why did I get up one morning? I got to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. Because if you say you love God, then you're gonna want to be around believers. But if you keep hanging with people who just say, oh, I don't believe in God. And if you keep hanging there, eventually you're going to drift away. You know, I don't care how much you say you believe, because if you believe, your belief is going to bring forth what? Some action. You're going to want to come together with a bunch of believers, because the Bible said, don't neglect yourself of the similar, mm -hmm. because we see the day of the Lord approach. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I believe that if you do do that, you're going to end up in some serious trouble. I think you should really think about it before you do it. Yeah, you're, you're right. I have a friend that's married to a loved one, and she's Christian. Mm. And I've seen how, you know, she'll say, well, he's not really, you know, praying as much as he is. He's not mine. So, you know, like, certain things are, you know, his habits are becoming like him. So with her, it's not like she's, you know, bringing him into Christianity. It's kind of like they're both just kind of slowly but surely not knowing what they're supposed to do for either one of their, you know, religions. So, you know, I just, and, and they have children too. So I said, well, where are you going to raise your children at? Because that's going to come, that, that question just has to be asked. Right. If he believes in Islam and you don't, what do you, what do, you gonna do? You know, if you're not going to church like you're supposed to go for whatever reason, for one of your excuses, you know, there comes a time when you have to choose. What are you going to choose? Right. One is going to draw. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible says. You cannot yeah. serve two masters. Two masters. Yeah. You will either love one mm -hmm. or hate the other, or you will cleave to one or the other. Right. Something's got to give. Right. You cannot serve two. Right. Yeah. And there so. is there is like constant, you know, conflict just because of you know the way that he lives and how he lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's brought up in the way that she lives. So mm -hmm. there's yeah. always little, you know, little things yeah. that come up. And when you are in situations like that, you're always going to have some, some, some disagreements. But that just adds a big old pile of yeah. other disagreements right yeah. there. And so, you know, when you got, you know, uh, one trying to pull this way, another one trying to pull that way, it's, like you said, it puts a strain yeah. so on the relationship. Yeah, so going, instead of both going in the same direction, exactly. they're constantly veering, they're tugging at each other to go. One way or the other. And like you said, you give this devil a stick, oh, yeah. you gonna get in there. He gonna get, he get he loves something like that. Cause he gonna get in there. He gonna work that. That's a party for him. Like, put the pie out there. That's <laughs> it. You know he gonna say, look, he just chew it all up. Look, man, you don't you don't let no woman tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. no, you, know? yeah. you, you don't let no man tell you what to do. Yeah. You your own woman. Mm -hmm. And then he's saying, I'm the man of the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There you go, the yeah. devil got it rocking, and he's yeah. sitting back, he said, no, yeah. I got one rock, and I'm going to hit, and I'm going to kill two birds with one, one rock. One, that's it, that's right, he's going to hit two with one, that's right. 
So and so, you, have to, you know, you really have to think about, I tell people in a situation like that, yeah, I don't recommend it, but you're going to do what you want to do anyway. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you from the word of God, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it, the word ain't saying You You see a lot of difficulties and, and we could go, we could, we could, we could spend the, the, the next hour just mm -hmm. talking about friends that we know mm -hmm. that have gone down that road yeah. and the situation. I don't know a single person that is going down that road and it's worked out well. <laughs> so, I tell my I can't help. I, I had a brother like that because my sister-in-law is Catholic. Mm -hmm. And my brother, he's a, how you put it, he's a Southern Baptist. Mm -hmm. And um, I told him, I said, listen, I ain't coming to tell you how your house is, but um, you ain't supposed to serve one master in here. Mm -hmm. So you say you're the head of your household and you're a Southern Baptist, you better act like one. Because if I can't, if I had to smack my grandmother into you or who the southern into you, I will do it. Mm -hmm. So I guess he's looked at me like they don't want me to start getting off on them. Yeah. So I guess he, you know, it's just crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it really is two different. Because mm -hmm. I had the problem with my husband. I go to church. I was in church ever since I was a child. Mm -hmm. You have to be in church. Mm -hmm. right. Sunday school, Sundays up and down. You go home, you come back. I mean, I was in church all day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. that's how I was raised. Mm -hmm. And like I tell my husband that I can go and pray and everything for us, mm -hmm. but you have to let God come inside of you. Mm -hmm. You have to, oh. you have a wall. Because my husband will put a wall up, I mean like a big brick wall. And I say, you better let him come in. Mm -hmm. The more you let the devil come in, then I'm going to be walking out to the door. And I'm not going to be looking back. Okay, and I don't need no child support, no money for you. I ain't going to be going up, wasting my time for work trying to take you for some child support. It ain't even worth it. Mm -hmm. So you better get it together. Well, the, so. the thing about, um, you know, being a Christian and being with another Christian is, you know, you go through your ups and downs of whether you're going to, you know, go or not go to church or whatever you're going through. And the thing about it is when you get back, you know, go back into it, is oh you're both still serving the same, same. God yeah. when you have two separate religions going on you still have that that tugging going on. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That's it. So even when you consider yourself getting back in line right. with the Lord, right. you're still going in a different direction right. than your mate is. Right. And, and to make sure you go in and like, like I was taught in class when I was a little kid, every Catholic, whatever religion it broke, broke it down. We all supposed to serve one God, and every book is read the same way. So if you go on this way, I will go, you know. Because my brother and I'm all on. I got a lot of them that's into that Muslim and stuff like that. And they start talking that crazy stuff. I'll be like, well, you show me in your book, and let me get somebody that I know that can, that's 100% in it that can tell me it's the same. And just other than that, y'all can leave me alone. Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's a lot. Like I said, I we, can, we can spend hours talking about this because we've all seen it you cannot live on this world and you watch as your friends grow up and that's what that's what happens because we all go you remember those stages when we went through when when you got married and then all your friends got married and then you want but you also hear about this this you know two or three, two or three friends that got married married who you know <laughs> and so you, you'd have that like and then you say well god help them yeah. you know because you knew that it was going to be a situation uh, like we used to say, a situation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so those are the situations that we have to keep in mind when we're talking about not being unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And look what it says. It says, for what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? Mm -hmm. And what uh, communion have light with what? Darkness. So you cannot walk in light and darkness at the same time. See, you can't say it's light and dark in here. It's either there is light or there's darkness. And right? I think that's why he used it. I think that's why he used the illustration here, light and darkness, yeah. because the two of them don't have no fellowship. That's right. You can't. You know, if you turn off these lights and you close them lines, it'll be dark. Mm -hmm. When you turn this light on, this darkness light. has got to disappear. Got to go. That's it. So you know they can't serve. They can't. Work together. And the thing about it is, is darkness has no power. Light has power. Show me a dark switch where you can you can you can turn on something that kills dark that kills light. The only way you can kill light is by trying to what hide it. 
-hmm. And the Bible said, Jesus said that the candle that's put on the on the hill cannot be what? Cannot be hid. So therefore you put your, you, you turn on the light and put it as high as you can put it. Mm -hmm. and, and it will shine. So it's important that we understand. Uh, but the reason that Paul is talking, is bringing this up to the Corinthian church is because just like in our day, back in his day, people believe it didn't matter. It don't really matter. And Paul's like, no, it does matter. And that was 2,000 years ago. And guess what? It still matters today. Right? And so uh, people think, well, this is going to be different for me. No, it won't be. All right? Verse 15, and what concord have Christ with, with Baal? All right? So there we go right there. And what part has he that believed with an infidel? All right? We done talked about all that already, so we won't go over that anymore. 16, and what, what agreement have the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. So we are the temple. That's right. All right. We are that living temple. All right. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out, and here's the scripture that people flip on, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Now, some people take that to the point where they they won't go to any thing. There's not. I'm not going to any. I'm, when I buy my car, I gotta buy it from a Christian dealer. Mm -hmm. When I go get when I go to the grocery store, it has to be owned by a Christian. This is not what it's talking about. What it's talking about is the things that we bring within our ministry. I'm not going to have my ministry influence. I'm not going to have my lifestyle. And But yet, today, the government, society, let's talk about that TV show. They're trying to tell us that, 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 that you need to alter how you see normal. And they got this show coming out called The New Norm. No, I'm not going to allow you I'm not going to bring that in and yoke it up with what I believe in the Bible. I'm not yoking that up with Scripture. I'm not going to say I'm going to believe that you can uh, 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 say it's right for two people that are not married to have sex. Because that's wrong. Two people that are, are, are of the same sex, male and female, that's wrong. Adultery is wrong. Fornication is wrong. Stealing is wrong. I, I cannot yoke that stuff up and put it together. Now it has nothing to do with love because I got to love the person that's, that's living in sin. I got to love the person uh, you know, that, that's uh, trying their best to live for God. But I'm never, go I'm never going to agree with that person that's living in sin. I'm going to always say, you know what brother, you know, you know, I mean I wish you the best, I wish you God's be, but I don't believe like you believe. I don't believe that's right. According to uh, what God is teaching us, you gotta back up again. Mm -hmm. You can't wish on God's speed. You can just say, "I don't, I don't." You know, like I told the lady at my job, I I love you, but I cannot embrace that. Mm -hmm. I cannot embrace that two women get married. Right. That is against the Scripture. And I said, "You're Catholic, and that is against the teachings of the Catholic Church." Mm -hmm. I said, "Moreover, it's against the teaching of the Word of God." So I can't embrace it, and I don't wish them God's feet. I just say I can't. Yeah. You, can't, you can't give any room to it. I mean, sometimes Christians, we start backing up, and then we get all timid. And I said, I love you dearly, but I just can't embrace it. It's true. We cannot, and we gotta, we gotta tell them the truth. That it's, you know, it's, it's not something that, that we agree with according to Scripture. It ain't got nothing to do. With how I, I, I think of you as an individual, as a person, you who, you who you are. But according to the scripture, the Bible says that you are living in sin. All right? Now, we all are born in sin. But the, fa the fact that you're doing that and calling it right, that's where the issue is. You see, you can't call it right. you got to say, no, this is wrong. Well, the, the, the scientists say I was born this way. The Bible said everybody was born in sin. All right. So you still got to you got to say it's wrong and repent, and then go on and live a, a, a righteous life as as within you, and then let God take care of the rest.
you have to be able to do that. You got to work within the things uh, uh, according to the scripture. A lot of people don't want, don't don't like that. They don't want to hear it. They don't want us to say that it's wrong life. But then you go back to Romans. I mean, we went through that, uh, and that's something that uh, uh, Romans point out. You can go back to Leviticus, and it points it out. Clear as day, it is not correct. Um, but the aspect of that uh, that that new philosophy, this new teaching, it's in our schools. It's in our, our TV shows, it's in our movies, and it, it's get to the point where it's really just bad because it's 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 everywhere. And, and if we don't keep ourselves yoked with Christ, we'll end up yoking up with society's beliefs. Yes, and the, and that, that thing with this new thing, we have to watch that word. That's the key word of today. This new thing. I hear Christians talking about God is doing a new thing. I said, what new thing is he doing? I said, tell me. What the new yeah, thing he's doing? I said, I said, the Bible that I read, it says God is the same yesterday and forevermore. He said, I'm a God that I change is not. So what new thing is he doing? Right. He's still calling sin, sin. Right. He's still calling a liar, sin. Mm -hmm. He's still calling stealing as a sin. So what new thing is he doing? That's right. That's right. You know, and these people keep talking about it. That's what Christians got to watch. God is doing a new thing. Yeah. That really aggravates me a little because God is not doing nothing new. He's the same God. No. That's, That's why it behooves that we as uh, parents and stuff because now this new, everything, new technology, new this and new that, our children is coming up thinking this is it. Mm -hmm. That's that. Mm -hmm. But we have to make sure that we sit down and we talk with our children and tell them what thus says the Lord and how it should be. And that what they are claiming to be new and improve and the right way is not. Yeah. It's the it's really the devil way. Yeah. And they talking about something, you know, like my daughter's like, Well two people love each other like but how? I love you, right? She said, Yeah. I said, Well how would you, uh, okay, I love you. I said, There's different types of love. There's love for mommy, there's love for dad. I said, But you can't put two people of the same sex and talking about yeah. love. I said, that ain't love. That's right. It's not. And so, and, I, and she keeps telling me, oh, I know you. I said, well, let's go to the Bible. Oh, I know that's what you're going to do. I said, that's what I'm going to constantly do because that's all I got to stand on. Mm -hmm. I can't stand on my words because right. I can't say it's wrong. I have to take you to the word. Take you to the word. Now, the new thing is they say, the gay guy told me, he said, well, show it to me in the New Testament. I said, <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he said, you know what he told me? I don't know what he told me. Oh, it's here. It's here. It's here. It's here. So that's why we have to be so rooted and grounded in this word. And that's, right. and that's why Paul keeps telling us he wants us to become what? Living epistles. That's that right. means we're supposed to know this book. That's right. Because yeah. one day somebody gonna snatch this book out yeah. your hand. You ain't gonna have it. You gotta, gotta know. know. And then you gonna have to really know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and that's what I'm saying. We gotta be very, very vigilant and, and study the word because people are coming up with all kinds of new stuff now. Yeah. And it's important that we recognize that um, that that's what's going on in our society, and that's what we cannot be yoked to. Mm. We cannot be yoked to that. We're in the world, but what? Not, Not of the world. All right, so when it says, therefore, come out from among them, no. I got to come out from among all them people that saying that this is the new poplar. No, no, you know what? Don't count me in. I ain't raising my hand to that. No, uh, I'm not part of that. I'm still, I'm sticking with what the word said. I'm sticking with what Jesus said. I'm sticking with the spirit of God said. I don't care what they saying. The new gay president, I ain't got nothing to do with none of that. Yep. You know, that's the new title hanging on the president. Mm -hmm. the new, oh, he's the gay president. Because yeah. he's what he passes the gas right the Lord. Yeah. So, you know, hey, well, let's go ahead with it. But I'm not down. With so, we have, to be, we, we have to be vigilant in, in that aspect and stand. And it's going to be very unpopular. And that's another thing. Some people don't really believe it, but they don't want people to be talking about it. And one thing that is so important is that when, um, they will then begin to label you that you are, you're a bigot, you're a hater, mm -hmm. you hate people. Right? Because you. No, I don't. I don't you can't hate a person when you're trying to tell them the truth. See, I would hate you if I said, you know what, do what you want to do. I could care less. It's no problem. That's hate. 
But when you're trying to tell people the truth, no, that's real love because you're saying, you know what, you know, you're not going to like me for this, but here's the truth because I really am trying to help you. You know, you think, I don't know what you think I'm trying to do here, but my aspect and all of my motivation and everything is to help you to understand and help you to, pers to, to prosper in your way. But uh, for me, just to agree with you, just to, just to agree so that you can feel comfortable in doing your wrong, that's not love. That's just that that what is down love so much that people don't know what love they don't know what love is. They don't they just, you know, think and they feel that love is supposed to make me take me to cloud nine all the time. No. Love love work out some things. Yes, love hurts sometimes. Love hurts sometimes. It does. Love hurts sometimes. It does. But the, at the end you'll be a better person. You'll be person. a better person. You're going you're going in the proper direction. All right. Let's finish this last verse. And will uh, be a father unto you, and ye shall be my son and daughter, saith the Lord. All right? Now, why will you be that? Because you come out from among them. And that's not the unclean thing. So I'm not going to deal and, 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 and touch all this, these things where they're trying to make uh, uh, the, the new definition of marriage. You can marry all, you know, anybody you want. Pretty soon they can be like, well, you know, you can marry a goat. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know. Well, you know, some people that love their animals more than they love. I, I know. Just well, you, you, you got to put the regulation in it. And the, and the regulation was set by the word. Because, see, you know what? I didn't make this world. I didn't make the universe. God did. And so he's the only one that can tell me what the right and what wrong is. And so nobody else can come up, no matter how much they, they, they polish it up, and they say, and this whole aspect of, well, if you just love people, it don't matter what you do. Yes, it does matter. It does matter. And so you have to always keep that in mind. Uh, and like I said, uh, I, I, I know we could spend hours on this because we all know situations and circumstances. And, uh, and there are a lot of difficulties uh, 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 that go along with that style of life. But the reality of it is, if you love an individual, you will tell them the truth. Now, the thing about it, once you tell them, guess what? It's up to them. You can't make a person do anything. But I, I, I am responsible for telling you the truth. All right? If I know that pan is hot, I can, and I see you getting ready to grab it, and I know you don't know it's hot, it's my responsibility to tell you, wait a minute, bro, that pan is very, that, that, that iron pan is hot. You either need to leave it alone or get a pothole. All right? That's my responsibility. Right, because I'm sharing something with you that it, but if I don't, if I look at you going to that pot and I say, well, touch it if you want to, well now, I'm wrong. Alright. Now, I didn't get burnt, but I'm wrong because I sit there and let you put your hand on there and scald your hand without giving you any warning. Now, I'm the one that's wrong as well. And I, that's not love. If I really care about you, I'm going to tell you about things to keep you from doing damage to yourself. It's also, on the flip side of that, it's not love when you just go along with. Mm -hmm. Just to, you know, I don't want to create no waves or anything like that. I'm going to just go along with the crowd. Right. That's, that's not love. That's not love either. That's it. All right, we're going to stop now because, like I said, we can go on and on and on.